All right, Steelers <laughs> at the Raiders. That's the first game we're going to pick right here. The Steelers are at the Raiders, and the Steelers are a three-point favorite. And as we talked about earlier, the Steelers and Justin Fields might be playing for, well, his starting spot as quarterback of Pittsburgh of, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers started out 3-0. They're 3-2. and Do they get to 3-3? Three and three? Do they get to 4-2? and two? How does this one play out? Again, a three-point favorite on the road at Las Vegas. I'm taking the Steelers. I'm rocking with Justin Fields. I'm rocking with, with my guy, quarterback. He needs to keep winning to keep that job, whether we like it or not. So I'm taking the Steelers to cover this game. Raiders are switching from Minshew to Aiden O'Connell. Um, I don't think AOC has it, so um, I'm taking Fields and the Steelers. I think the Raiders are really, really bad at football. I don't know how they beat the Baltimore Ravens. I still don't understand that game. I'm going to go with the Steelers here, but saying that, I think everybody in here is going to take the Steelers, so if that's the case, I'm going to switch it to Raiders. Casey, which, where are you going on this? I'm going Steelers. So. Give me the Raiders. Um, I'm going with the Raiders. Okay. Keep so me, you 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 said keep me with the Steelers. Steelers. Keep me with the Steelers. Okay. That's I'm, good. Thank you. Okay. I'm going with the Raiders. For one, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the the Steelers' offense. You've always said you like AOC, though. So that yeah, makes sense. You've like, always you've said always that. said you're you've a big AOC guy. Always. He I, looks like if you were to hire someone to play like a weird cop in a comedy, <laughs> that's who you would. That's, that's right. Who, yeah. Yeah. Did you do this. Like, yeah. did I? It was over my head. AOC. Yeah. AOC. Your favorite. What am I missing? Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. We don't talk politics. We don't talk here, politics. But if you if we could, it's the Green New Deal. So we've, you're going to understand one day <laughs> when you watch the podcast, you'll get it. No. Um, by the way, our guy, Mike Tomlin, leader of men. That's right. Another year in another situation where he seems to not have control of his locker room. I am so sick and tired of hearing about the leader of men garbage that it come when it comes to Mike Tomlin. I know he's a good coach, obviously. And I know that there are a lot of guys that rally around him, but I mean, come on. It's just constant. Every single season, yeah. there is some guy that is quitting on his team, has an attitude problem, is disgruntled in some way. I'm out on Justin Fields as far as being a legitimate starting quarterback in the NFL. That's one reason why I'm going with the Raiders. They've lost back-to-back -back games. I think they dropped to 3-3. Three and three. But when Justin Fields already has limited weapons in Pittsburgh, not that I feel sorry for him about that, his number one weapon is becoming a major distraction, has been a distraction all week. Oh, no way. Who could have seen that coming? Uh, yeah. His whole I, career? It, it's it, it's it's frust it's not frustrating. I don't care. I'm not a Pittsburgh fan, but it's frustrating that again another situation where we're gonna act like oh Mike Tomlin he has complete control of the situation because you know what they'll do they'll trade him. This is what happens with Pittsburgh when they get rid like Deontay Johnson last year he was a problem last year they got rid of him and what they do Mike Tomlin leader of men when there's a problem get they out. get rid of that problem that's what you do. But you know if the Browns or the Bengals have a problem and they get rid of that, oh see they couldn't control them and they let it they let it get to a boiling point. Yeah, I'm going with the Raiders in this one. I think there's dysfunction happening in Pittsburgh. Russell Wilson's going to come save the day. Dysfunction in Vegas too, though. This is a dysfunction off. And that's that's true. <laughs> that 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 is true. From one dysfunctional wide receiver to another. That's right. Uh, nonetheless, but I'll take the Raiders. All right. Next up, uh, again, we're giving you our picks heading into the weekend. Pop it up on the screen. Neighbors ruled out. Neighbors ruled out. He's ruled out. Big time before we pick this Bengals game. Good to know. Uh, Browns at the Eagles. Now, I think I think everyone knows right now uh, yeah. exactly uh, who the, who no, should no, be no, favored in yet. the – What? What is happening? We're trying to figure out if Neighbors being out changed the line before we get to that game and try oh. to pick it. Uh, no, so the Browns at the Eagles is the next one up. Eagles a nine-and-a-half point favorite. I'm not surprised that the Eagles are favored. We were talking about lines earlier that were kind of surprising. Yeah. This is a line that surprises me. A nine and a half point it's really big. line. I mean, that, that's kind of wild to me. I'm going to pick the Browns to cover, but I don't think the Browns win. I'm picking the Browns to cover. Uh, again, they're a nine and a half point dog on the road at Philadelphia. I do think you get a better game from Deshaun Watson, whatever that means. Um, so I'm going to go with the Browns in this one, at least covering, but I still think Philly comes out on top. Yeah, I'm also taking the Browns. Um, I, oh, think, I think the nine and a half is far, far, far too big. Um, yeah, I don't think the Eagles are very good at all. So I'm going with Cleveland. I mean, I'm going with the Browns, but I – Here we go. Casey, where are you going? Uh, just pick I'm, the game. I was picking the, the Browns too. Just pick I'm the going game. Eagles. I'm going Eagles. I don't believe in this pick. It's I hate the It's the worst pick. when Kirk Herbstreit does I'm not going to bet stuff, it. So just pick the game. Yeah, but it works. That's the craziest <laughs> it part. It, it works. It, it does. does. It does. It does work. Casey is Casey is testament to it that it does work. I've sat in here and watched you do it and it not work many many times. I think the Browns win this game outright, but I'm going to say right, that so I'm not Eagles the Eagles win by ten. Earlier when you said which quarterback gets benched first, did you pick Deshaun or Fields? You said Fields. 
He did say Fields. Fields. Okay, I'm just making sure. Because if yeah, if they win Shots this weekend, he's not getting benched. Uh, but yeah, I want to pick Cleveland to win, but that line scares me. But I feel good that they can cover. Um, I think I, yeah, I, cover I'm that. afraid to pick the Browns money line in that situation. But nonetheless, both Eagles wide receivers back, or at least limited in practice yesterday. So it looks like they'll be back. Um, you talked about that the pro football focus stuff a little bit ago. You were talking with you know this is good. Yeah. You were talking with Mims and, and you know a couple of the the, yeah, the he's offensive just my, line. Just my, my boys. Yeah, you know the offensive line for the Bengals. Jacob had dinner with them last night. No, for real, he did. Uh, <laughs> but you said that you asked them about pro football focus and that yeah. they kind of they, they don't like it, right? Yeah, they said it's a good way to to you know get a broad idea of how players are playing, but how their their gripe with it is how they assign blame without knowing play calls. If two guys make a mistake and end up in the same spot, they just kind of pick one. Uh, and they, they, they did not like that. They thought that was unfair. And it's one of those two where the Browns defense grades out really, really well from pro mm. football focus. And that's one of those where I'm like, I've watched every single second of every single game. And I am I'm really struggling to comprehend how statistically the Browns are a top five defense in the NFL right now. That doesn't sound right. But according to pro football focus, that's the case. So it made me think of that a little bit ago. But our next game on deck, we talked about the look, the Eagles minus nine and a half. That's a wild line. But this next one, it's the game of the week. We talked about the game of the, of the season in college football a little bit ago, Ohio State, Oregon. I think this has kind of turned into a very similar situation in the NFL. Commanders and Ravens, Jaden Daniels against Lamar Jackson. The Ravens are at home, and they're a seven-point favorite. A three-and-a-half-point favorite, no gripe. Five-point favorite, whatever. A seven-point, a whole touchdown favorite at home against Jaden Daniels in Washington. How surprised are you by that line, and who do you have in this one? Shocked. Absolutely shocked by the line. Commanders have been playing better football than almost anyone, and the Ravens haven't been able to hold on to a lead late regardless of who they're playing. So I'm, I'm taking the commanders strictly because that line is so high. When I saw this, I thought people were going to be all over the commanders, and that's not the case. It's, it's pretty much a 50-50 split here. So I'm taking the commanders plus a full touchdown. I think Jaden Daniels does enough to at least cover. This is the week, gambling-wise, I'm going to bet on things that I hate. I'm going to bet on the Ravens minus seven because I hate it. I'm going to bet on Browns plus nine and a half because I hate it. I just hate everything. Um, the Ravens have no business winning this game by a touchdown. Uh, I, th- <laughs> I think. I think. I think. Honestly, I, I, I think the Commanders are better than the Ravens as of this very second. I know. I know what the defense is, but the Ravens' secondary isn't exactly great either. So I, I think it's going to be a. I think it's going to be a, a 35, 33 point game again, uh, and we'll see who holds the ball last. That's what this is going to come down to, and I. I just think a game like that. It's that's just seven is too many points. Yeah. By the way, why does you know, we talked about how bad the Bengals' defense is. And the, the outcome of that game last weekend between the Bengals and Ravens, everyone was talking about how great Lamar was and how horrible the defense was mm-hmm. um, for Cincinnati. But did anyone see how bad the Ravens' defense horrible. was too? Now, that's not discounting what Joe Burrow did. I'm just saying, like, that – that should not happen. You should not be picked apart at ease like that. I mean, the Bengals were scoring at ease. I mean, yeah. they, it was equally as un, their defense was equally as unimpressive as the Bengals in that shootout. It's just interesting in a shootout between Lamar and Joe Burrow. Lamar is having a, a shootout win over Joe Burrow, while Joe Burrow just picks apart a bad defense. It doesn't make any sense as far as why the Ravens don't get criticized more because that's that that type of game happens regularly for them. Mm-hmm. It's not like I get they're a good defense. That's the, the, the what they're known for. But that wasn't a good defense last week. I, I'm not sure why there's not more concern about that, that Ravens defense right how many, now. How many sacks did Burrow take last week? Do we know that answer? Yeah, Anybody know that answer? I can look it up in it goes only three. Three sacks? I was going to say, because I, I didn't feel like he, he was getting get sacked much. I didn't feel like he was getting touched that much. Three sacks, lost 21 yards. So okay. seven yards a sack or so. All right. So, listen, I, 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 I think the Ravens are good. I think they might go to another AFC championship game. I just don't think it's a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, I don't think it's a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, unfortunately. I think Lamar Jackson's a good quarterback. But it does come to a point where if you don't win in the postseason, I'm going to have doubts. And I know it sucks that you, we, have to, we all have to play Patrick Mahomes, but he hasn't shown that he can beat Patrick Mahomes yet in, that, in, the, in the playoffs. And until I see that, I don't think that team's winning a Super Bowl. Despite what their defense is, despite who's on offense, Mark Andrews still doesn't get the ball. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of out on the Ravens this year. I, I'm, more, I'm more out on the Ravens this year than I've been out on them in a long, long time. Um, I'm picking the commanders to cover in this one um, against Baltimore. Look, Jane Daniels, as impressive as he has been, it's not as if he's been dicing apart defense. He's just been making really, really good decisions for a rookie quarterback. He's been making timely plays, too. It's what he did against Cincinnati. Some of those throws that he made were very impressive throws, especially in crunch time in that game. Um, I don't think he – his stat line was very good against Cleveland. 
But Cleveland made them look bad at times. They made them look erratic at times. Uh, I think that the Ravens can do that with their pass rush up front. It's just whether or not Jane Daniels can take advantage of the secondary of the Ravens the way he did Cincinnati's when they played a few weeks ago. I still think the Ravens could potentially come out in a close one here, but I do have the Commanders uh, covering this one, so I'm going to take the Commanders uh, from that standpoint. So there you go. All right, uh, what do we have? I know we usually close out with the Bengals. I didn't put it in the right order. Which one do you want to pull up next? We can do either one. Pull up the non-Bengals one. We'll close out with the Bengals Alrighty. Uh, so the next one, this is the Devontae Adams Bowl, in my opinion. That's right. I think the winner of this game, and this is Monday Night Football, I think the winner of this game um, – Closes the deal to get Devontae Adams. There's reports that are coming out now that Devontae Adams and the Bills, apparently Devontae Adams just followed Josh Allen on Instagram. Consider it done. Signed, sealed, delivered. He's going to be a Buffalo Bill, right? Signed, sealed, delivered. It's like, I'm yours. <laughs> that's where we're at with this. No, I, I do believe that the winner of this game gets Devontae Adams. I think Devontae Adams is going to be watching this game very intently on Monday night. And whoever comes out on top, whatever quarterback looks the most impressive, I think this is just a show. Um, uh, for Devontae Adams. So, Bills minus two and a half on the road at the Jets. Josh Allen against Aaron Rodgers. A good quarterback matchup, but how good is this game going to be? Because two very questionable looking teams at this point. I think it's going to be a great game. I really do think this is going to be a great football game. I'm really, really excited to watch it. I think it's going to be back and forth, and I think it's going to be for the upper hand in the AFC East. The winner of this game is definitely going to have an upper hand because I don't think the Jets can go in and beat Buffalo in Buffalo, especially later in the yep. season. So if they can't take care of business at home, you can probably sign those AFC North or AFC East hopes away. I'm taking Buffalo minus two. I think Josh Allen's the vastly superior quarterback at this time in Aaron Rodgers' career. And you say it's the Devontae Adams Bowl. That's funny because just a couple weeks ago, I thought he was locked in to go to the Ravens. We all were being told that he was locked in to go to the Ravens. So add him to the list of big-time receivers that are absolutely going to Baltimore that either don't go or don't work out. So shout out the Ravens for always botching this and rocking with Rashad Bateman. That's right. Sean's making fun of me because I said, by the way, uh, I didn't think the Ravens could win a Super Bowl, but they could make an AFC Championship game. Let me clear it up. The Ravens aren't going to go to an AFC Championship game. Let me just fix okay. that for Sean in the chat. I had to say, because it was in my mind, and I couldn't let it go. Uh, and you brought up the Ravens, so I had to. Bills win this game by 25. Ooh. This, is, this isn't close. The, 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 the disarray that's in the Jets organization right now cannot be solved until they get Devontae Adams in there. I, it's disarray, but I think there's too much talent in there. Like That um, offense is good, man. They're, they're going to, they can out-talent the Bills in this one, and, and it is at home. And Aaron Rodgers, I still think, is a very good quarterback, uh, quarterback although he hasn't looked like that uh, over the last couple of weeks. I think the Jets, and, you know, they get rid of your guy, Salah. I think with Salah being out of there, Robert Salah being out of there, um, I don't think he was necessarily the problem. But a lot of times when changes like that happen, a lot of times teams played unified football, and it just so happens to be uh, on this Monday night football slate. I think the Jets are at home. Uh, you have Aaron Rodgers. I think they're just a more talented team on both sides of the ball. I think the Jets get a win at home. The Bills just have no weapons. I was very high on the Bills yeah. to start. I thought it was so cool seeing what Josh Allen was doing without any help, any weapons. I just think this Bills team is what we all thought coming in. Just an untalented team on the offensive side of the ball. Like I'm going to take the Jets in this one. It took a great uh, play from line. Keon Coleman for them to get anything out of the wide receiver room last yeah. week. So, there you go. All right, and last but not least, as we close it out on the radio side, the Cincinnati Bengals on the road taking on the Hasn't Giants. Moved as of yet. The first uh, 25,000 fans get a uh, Tom Coughlin bobblehead. I don't know really what that means as far as the outcome of this game, but just a, not a good. wild stat. Not, not good. Not good. Teams are, they're 1-0. 1-0 on in Tom Coughlin games across the NFL so far this year. They play inspired football. That's right. Will inspired football be enough to give the Bengals their fifth loss of the season? Are the Bengals 1-5 when we come in and do the show on Monday? I'm taking the Bengals because, yet again, for what is the fifth week in a row, yep. what happens if they lose? So I'm taking the Bengals minus three and a half because I, don't, I think if they don't cover, they won't win. If they cover, they obviously will win. I think you have to win by, by multiple scores here in order to get the win. So if you're winning by, if you're talking yeah. about a three-point game down the stretch, I think the Giants take it. So I'm taking the Bengals minus three and a half because I think, honestly, at this point with this team, it's the same as the money line bet. Last week, I've, after I suffered that heartbreak against Baltimore when I had a responsible amount of money on the Cincinnati Bengals to win that game, I made it a, I made it a point that I'm never going to bet the Bengals again. Uh, it won't happen. 
not in my life. Can't do it. Can't can't be up by 10 with four minutes left and somehow lose that game and not cover the spread. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the Giants. I'm going to take the Giants plus 3.5. I'm going to take the Giants alt line minus 2.5. I'm going to take the Giants alt line minus 6.5. I'm going to bet the Giants so many ways that there's only one outcome and that the Bengals win this game. That's right. That's the only way that this can happen. I'm going to bet the Giants every prop. Every prop I find, every player I find, every defensive kicking prop, I will find every bet I can make on the, on the New York football giants, and I'm going to make it. And that way, it's the only way that I can see foreseeable, in the foreseeable future that the Bengals win games, is if I have every dollar I have on the opposite side. So Giants everything. Giants points, spreads, over, team total, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, all money lines, individually, the quarters, the halves, take the halves. I'm taking the Giants every way possible just so the Bengals can win. Fair enough. Fair enough. Here's the deal. Every time in the past I've picked the Bengals to lose, the Bengals always win. And then this season, the Bengals keep losing when I pick them to win. So maybe that's my secret hater sauce that I have just been kind of dousing on your guys' this season all season long. So I'm going to continue that, that, that hater raid. Uh, I'm going to pick the Bengals. No, in all seriousness, I am picking the Bengals. I'm picking the Bengals because of the point I've been trying to make from the very beginning. At the end of the day, you can look at the schedule for the Bengals. It is one of the easiest ones remaining. But I watched what the Ravens, I watched what Lamar Jackson had to do to beat Joe Burrow last week. He had to make some of the wildest throws. He had to make some of the wildest completions. They had to make some of the wildest plays that I don't think Daniel Jones is good enough to make. Daniel Jones, if it does come down, as bad as this defense is, assuming you get the production from Joe Burrow and the Bengals that they've been getting all season, at the end of the day, if it does come down to a shootout situation or a close game situation in crunch time, even with the Giants being at home, Daniel Jones can't outplay make Joe Burrow. And that's why I'm taking the Bengals in this one. It really is going to come down to if defense is a bad thing uh, and the defense is bad for the Bengals, and it is, and it's going to come down to that fourth quarter each time, I just have a hard time believing that the majority of the quarterbacks left on the Bengals' schedule can make bigger plays in crunch time than what Joe Burrow can. I have the Bengals and Joe Burrow getting their second win of the season on Sunday night. I think I like the under, too. 47 and a half. I think this defense is going to wake up a little bit and do something. So I'm going to take the under as just a hope that this offense can score 30 and the defense can play football. All right, Casey, close this out. Bengals, Giants, who you got on Sunday? I know it's going to be. I know who it's going to be. Who, who you got? Who you got? I, I got the Bengals. I got the Bengals. I, I agree with Jacob and his, uh, his take on how they're going to win it. Like I said, the game script is really, really important. Um, if they're going to win, it's not going to be close. I think they're going to, they're going to be up by at least two scores whether that's two touchdowns or a touchdown, a field goal, um, two field goals, something like that. They're going to be up. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Bengals. I'm going to wear my orange-colored glasses one more time. Hopefully they don't do your let part. me down. Yeah, do your part. Uh, by the way, any concern at all about Chase Brown? Being on the injury report, Kelsey Conway, a half hour ago, Chase Brown is going through warm-ups right now after being added to the injury report yesterday. With a quad injury, a quad injury is what had him pop up on that injury report. Yeah, both Chase Brown and Zach Moss have been on the injury report throughout the week. Both are practicing today, at least what I can see so far. So no concerns about them being out this week if they're getting in on the action today. But like we said earlier, Malik Neighbors was ruled out for this weekend. No line movement because of that, at least yet. But uh, certainly a big plus for this Bengals defense not to have to worry about one of the best young receivers in football.